This is a rated PG animated adventure and comedy with a runtime of 92 minutes, hour and 32 minutes crisp on Rotten Tomatoes. Hello. Goo. This has been a conversation on Twitter the last couple of days. 53% from the critics, those mm -hmm. fucking snobs. 96% from the audience. And to echo the critics point, a 46 on Metacritic, which yes. is just bad. It's not good. I Mac, don't, I don't so understand that. Usually, I don't really care for where, uh, don't really care for when you go after the critics. Sure. But uh, I am sitting here telling you right now that what were you expecting from <laughs> right. this movie? Right. Were you looking for cinema? I don't. And now I will say um, it is of a certain age. So yes. uh, I feel like the people that don't like this movie. So 46% of the critics, whatever it is, 47% have to be 70s kids or older. So sort of miss the Mario boom, miss the video game boom, more or less. Um, but even at that, you should have an understanding going into a Super Mario movie that this is like for eight year olds. It's not for adults. Yeah. We, you and I will like things and many other adults will like things because we were kids when this shit was, was first on the scene. But this is, this is for eight to 10 year old kids. And for a movie that is for eight to 10 year olds or even four to 10 year olds, you know, like you just said, as a Nintendo kid, it gave you 90 minutes of Easter eggs, 90 minutes of fan service. And Mac, I've said this a million times. I'm a fan and I like to be serviced. And I know that uh, the the argument on the critic side, right, is they're they're uh, evaluating everything in a vacuum. So none of that that those caveats don't matter to them. Mm -hmm. But what I'm saying, and I think what most regular people are saying, is it should matter. Yes. You have as a as a uh, as a human being, you naturally have certain expectations going in to certain movies and shows and whatnot. A Super Mario movie, the expectations for a great story are low. The expectations yeah. for fun, you know, shit Easter eggs that we saw when we were like shit like that. It's super high. But no one is going into this expecting a hell of a story. Also, you don't need super deep, complex stories for every single movie. Sometimes you just need a very weird, splintered story that isn't necessarily coherent, but it's bright. It's fun and it moves fast. Speaking of that story, it was written by Matthew Fogel who has a heck of a, a, of a resume here. He Does wrote he go by Big... McLovin as well. <laughs> that was, uh, what was his first name? McLovin's first name. It was something Fogel. It was something Fogel and I'm blanking. Yeah. Oh, oh no. Goo, Matthew Fogel wrote Big Mama's like father, like son. I believe that's my the favorite. Third, yeah, that's my favorite Big one. Mama movie. He wrote the Lego movie too, which was very successful. Minions, the rise of Gru. Also Hold up. So successful. he only writes sequels? apparently so far but this was his first one he's the sequel boy okay well i gave him a chance here and he and he uh i don't know if he knocked it out of the park but he did well enough yeah. upcoming if you're interested in this type of thing he is doing the prince charming movie so yeah. that's something that will be coming out you know, this movie was directed by two fellas aaron horvath who uh did the teen titans go the series and the movie teen titans go to the movies he also was a writer on both of those things and Michael Jelenic, who directed one episode, one episode of Teen Titans Go. That was his only directing experience prior to this movie. So obviously he must be one of Horvath's guys. Uh, he's actually written a bunch of DC animated stuff and is the writer on the upcoming Nar Naruto movie. So if you liked uh, something he did, maybe you're looking forward to that. Goose synopsis of this movie. The story of the Super Mario Brothers on their journey through the Mushroom Kingdom. That's all it, it is. is. Simple. That's, That's all it is. <laughs> this movie stars Chris Pat, Chris Pratt as Mario, uh, Anya Taylor Joy as Princess Peach, and for some reason I could not figure it out. I know she was doing press and whatnot. I couldn't figure out who the voice was during the movie, so that's probably a good thing. Like, I, it, like the other two, you, it's very clear who the voice is. I couldn't figure out that with that most of them. Yes, ATJ, uh, Charlie Day as Luigi, Jack Black as Bowser. Kevin Michael Richardson, who I believe voices Elmo as K uh, Kamek. Is that how you pronounce it? He was great wizard? in the movie, actually. He was very good. The little wizard there. Is that how you yeah. say it? Kamek? 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 I don't Kamek. know. Carrie Payton, not Gary, as Penguin King. Sebastian Maniscalco in the uh, upset of the century did not play an Italian in this movie. He was Spike. Yeah. Keegan-Michael Key as Toad. 
Fred Armisen as Cranky Kong and Seth Rogen as Donkey Kong. So as I said in the spoiler-free little teaser that I did at the beginning of the week, my favorite voice out of all these was Fred Armisen, where I'm not sure if the character said anything funny, but the way that he said it made me laugh. Yeah, he was great as Cranky Kong. My favorite was actually Jack Black as Bowser because there were hints of Jack Black in there, but he actually... He played a character. He got into character. He didn't just do Jack Black like Seth Rogen did for Donkey Kong. Like mm -hmm. Donkey Kong is just Seth Rogen. Jack Black actually created a Bowser character for this voice. Now, Mac, I can finally say this. You know, we got Black Panther. We got crazy rich Asians. <laughs> I finally have a movie that represents me. You're feeling very seen? I'm feeling seen. Did you see that dinner scene with his right. family? Right. That was just like every Sunday at my house. Now, Gil, I have questions. Yeah. And um, so they set Mario and Luigi in the real world as real human beings. Mm -hmm. And they still make them incredibly small. Now, I know there are some paisans out there that are pretty short. Uh, Mamma Mia. They just straight up didn't explain why these two were so short. Do you need to? <laughs> and also, they don't explain why they wear matching outfits, but they're not twins. They're plumbers. <laughs> okay all right fair enough that's actually not terrible also let me just uh, say this right now if you're putting italians in movies play up the stereotypes as much as possible because it gets a laugh out of me every single time yeah not me not so much i actually think maniscalco is a terrible comedian but that's just me uh well, i'm saying in movies uh let's have a spaghetti, oh, it's the spaghetti. yeah oh uh, mushrooms did, ma i just Why did an hour of Sebastian maniscalco. My pasta. Oh, come on ma <laughs> Goo, yeah. uh, comparing this movie to some recent video game movies, and I'm probably missing a couple here, but the two that came to mind were the Sonic the Hedgehog movies and Detective Pikachu. Now, this is absolutely better than the first Sonic movie. That first Sonic yes. movie is kind of terrible. You know what's weird is at the screening, someone nudged me twice and was like, this is no Sonic. I'm like, what, well, is, what is happening right now? So there's a little bit of a, of a distinguished, or not a, that's not the word I'm looking for. Maybe it is. A distinguished gentleman who loves himself some Sonic 1. Uh, so, so the the issues, the issue with the Sonic movies, now Sonic 2 was much better than the first one. I agree. Is they try to do adult humor in there in mm -hmm. a kid's movie. And this movie doesn't try to do that at all. Now, Sonic 2 lands a great deal more of the adult humor than the first one did. Um, but that movie is probably more geared for like a 12-year-old as opposed to this movie. It, they tried to middle it there. Um, but I did. I think I liked Sonic 2 a little more than this movie. So this movie feels like if Sonic 2 cut out all the James Marsden stuff and it was just the video game stuff. Yeah, but on, on the other side of that, Sonic 2 had a decent little story in there. A good enough story to kind of make it a better movie than this movie. But I would fully understand why someone would like this movie over Sonic 2. Uh, and then good Detective Pikachu which was another one that sort of middled it, not necessarily for a five-year-old, but not really an adult movie. I definitely liked Detective Pikachu more, but that's my exact style. That was right up my alley. And uh, again, I still could see how someone would like Super Mario over Detective Pikachu. But I would also argue that the end of the Detective Pikachu movie, like the last 20-ish minutes, is completely horrible. Like it is, it's garbage. It's not great. It's not great. Um but both of those movies tried to give you real, you know, um, adult-oriented stories mixed in with a kid's movie. This movie didn't do that at all, for better or worse. Now, I say for worse because I think that's why critics aren't really liking the movie. Agreed. There's no legitimate story underneath it all. Um, but again, I wasn't expecting that. Most people aren't expecting no, that. And also, I, going I into it, it's made by the same company as Minions. You knew right. that Illumination wasn't going to give you this deep, and you mentioned... Uh, the Lego movie, it's not going to give you this Lego movie deep story behind it. Right. It's going to give you completely surface things. But also, I, I'm not even saying it really needed the story either because there's a, because you know we grew up with Mario, there's enough Easter eggs and in, in, uh, member berries in here to appease us, you know? So they don't they didn't really need adult jokes and adult themes because there's enough things already in there to appease us. And I feel like they they made the right decision in doing that. Don't give me an adult oriented story in yes. a Super Mario's movie. And I think I agree with you completely. This is it's not exactly what I wanted, but I think this was the best way to go about it. Yeah, it, like there's not there really isn't much substance here. But 
I like, I don't know what more to say than I didn't want substance in this movie. You know, like if they try to add substance to this movie, then I actually start to legitimately question why they don't explain how little they are, you know, but because they don't try to make it a, like a real film, I don't have to worry about that sort of stuff. And mm -hmm. that's a distinguishment we can make as someone, as people reviewing this movie, we're not necessarily critics. We do, you know, criticize movies, review movies, but I think that's, that's the distinguishment we can make when we're not, you know, these higher up guys writing for the fucking globe, you know, we can make, we can say, Oh, this never had a chance to be a film. So I'm not going to evaluate it as a film. It's and stupid. also they never wanted it to be a film. They want it to make a billion dollars and right. it's gonna. Absolutely. Absolutely. And go on top of it all. The animation was amazing. Yeah. Great animation. In Crisp, it. bright, really, fast really moving. Good. Like I said earlier, like a video game. Ooh. Because that's what like this video stuff is based on, you know? Scene. Oh, because those are usually better than the actual animation yes, in the game. There you go. There you I got go. what you're saying here. Hey, Mac, how about we quickly go through the octagon with this flick? Let's do it. Fun factor. And I would say that from Jump Street, it gave me all the references that I wanted. Yeah, it was littered with fun throughout the way the movie opens. Every every little thing they did. Um it, it was nice that it wasn't completely straightforward. Like yeah. I didn't expect them. I didn't expect Mario and Luigi to be actual plumbers in the real world. I thought we would probably open in a video game world. So that was a little bit of a, a minor twist at the beginning, but I liked it. I, I, I sort of liked everything they went for. Satisfactor. And I was satisfied by the references. Really nothing from the story was like, Oh, I'm super satisfied by that. But like getting certain things on the Kong kingdom, with like the Minecrafts, like those things, like I was like, holy shit. They gave me these, uh, these, what are these things called? It's from Donkey Kong and you're in the mine carts, sorry. And you're in the carts and you're jumping from like rail to rail. And it was a perfect execution of what that was from the game. Yeah. And I liked like the four or five times where the camera went side scroll at certain mm -hmm. points and like did homage to side scroll games. Um, for me, I really liked seeing them dip into certain video game elements throughout, mm -hmm. but I, I will fully admit this movie could have been more satisfying. I'm not sure no, how. Absolutely. It but I wasn't, been. I wasn't like fully satisfied. No, but also saying this as a 34 year old, sure. But I think that all of these things here, everything in the octagon hot dogs wise, if you ask a 10 year old, it's all out of the park. Yeah, you're right. A hundred percent. I don't, I didn't hear any crying kids while I was in there. And I also didn't hear kids talk the whole time, which means they're staring at the screen and enjoying what they're which watching. Which then plays into the borometer. I don't think there's a chance for boring. No, it's tight. It's crisp. 90 minutes in and out. The pacing's really good. Oh, by the way, I also really like the deep voice Toad. Yes, Keegan-Michael Key is Toad. No, no, no. The deep voice one. So not Keegan-Michael oh. Key, but the other one who's like, Princess, we must go. <laughs> like the guards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was good. Halloween. Will this movie go down over time? I mean, as someone who's going to see it over a hundred times, I would assume so. But I also think this is going to hold a special place in my heart because, and I know you guys are probably uh, probably sick of hearing me say this, but it's going to be my son's first movie. He's super psyched to see it. And I'm super psyched to see it with him. Yeah. That's going to be an awesome experience. Awesome memory. And, and to that point, Sure, I'm sure this will this will wean a little bit for me, but I could also see my six year old niece watching this every day for the next year. So yes, Aquator is it better or worse than Aquaman? And for it being a true kids movie, I will say it's better. Yeah, it's definitely better. Tans Tan City, Excite Bike Mania. What got you going in this movie? I do think it lacks a real pants tent movie uh, moment for me. I I think it could have used. Like, uh, I think they try to use the Tanuki Mario suit or the cat suit, those couple things as those moments. Um, but I, 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 I sort of like a super smash brothers moment maybe would have been a pants tent for me. Um, you get, we get like rainbow road in here, which was kind of fun, but to me, it, it did lack a true pants tent moment. And also I don't want to get too nerdy here, but for him to use that Tanuki suit as he did, he would need to run up to get that type of, uh, <laughs> flying ability or, um, have him grab a pea. Have him grab one of those super wing peas. Sure, sure. Yep. Uh, Split that hairs story. over here, you know? <laughs> Max Credit Union. Who are you giving credit to? I think the animators go. I, I was truly impressed with the way that this movie looked. And there were a lot of colors and a lot of characters and a lot of different characters that they animated. I really mm -hmm. liked it. 
For those of you tardy to the Mac and Goo party, we rate everything on a 40 hot dog rating basis. Mac, what do you think? Um, Simple enough here, Goo. To me, I knew what this was going to be going in. I knew it was going to be a fun popcorn movie in and out. And honestly, I think it's 30 hot dogs. Now, that might seem low to you guys, but like 30 hot dogs to me, is if I'm not disappointed in the movie, is like a, a classic, perfect popcorn movie. You go, you enjoy it in the theaters. I'm not going to think much about it in the coming weeks, but I had fun watching it. Mac, for me, I think it is 90 minutes of fan service, and I mean that in the nicest way possible. I think this might be one of the best fan service movies ever made, really. Just mm. completely devoting itself almost entirely to fan service for the adults there. The and people for the that kids, made this movie truly love the games. And for the kids, it's a super simple story, no true layers to it, but that's not a bad thing. It's a video game movie. It's based on a video game. It keeps it moving. This movie knew exactly what it wanted to be. It was tight, fast moving, bright, fun. And for those of you who are going there being like, oh, I want some cinema tonight. Let me feast my eyes upon Illuminations Mario. Get out of town. <laughs> what are you doing? Get the fuck out of here. This is a great family movie, especially for those of you who have Nintendo parents and, you know, burgeoning young children who are starting to get into it. And like I said, as a 34-year-old, I can like it for what it is now. But knowing how I would have felt about this as a kid. I would have watched this every single day and I would have loved it. I would have watched every part of it, all the sweet powers, all the sweet um, Leafs, Tanuki suits. I wish they had a frog suit. They didn't do that. I wish they played aquatic ambiance. They didn't do that. But everything in it, I loved. And like I said, can't wait to bring my son to it. I also mentioned Cranky Kong, Fred Armisen. I love the voiceover work there. It is just good, goofy fun. And the Easter eggs are so good. And I mean, not just for the Mario stuff, the Easter eggs for Donkey Kong Country really got to me. A game yeah, that I did. love, a series that I really love. And they didn't they didn't shy away from one to give more to the other. Mac, for me, like, it's really tough to give it a hot dog score. But I think it's a B. Therefore, I'm giving it 34 hot dogs. Ooh, wow. So where does that rank for you? Now, don't get me wrong. Like, um, I think I'm going to be on the low end, but I also like when I was going into this movie, if it was a 30 dog movie, I was going to say it was a success. Um, but so, I'm also rating this as a parent for sure. No, and I as a that, father, I know that whole... you can't comprehend <laughs> well, that. Not that I know of. Um, I, I, I totally understand that. I'm not, I, I do think that's high. And then I, I think no, at the end, I think at the high, end of look, the year, when you when you're looking at other 34 dog movies, you're going to be like, ah, this doesn't make a lot. No, no. Of and it probably is closer to like, to me, a 33 or a 34. And, you know, let's see how it sits with me. Like I said, I'm going to watch this a hundred fucking times. So where does that rank on the year for you so far? Third. Third. Yeah. So I'm fourth at 30. Um, I guess that speaks more to the year than it does the movie. Mm -hmm. Mac, how about some quick spoilers? Yeah. Let's do a, a little small spoiler section here. Well, I mean, we've already kind of given all the spoilers. <laughs> Yeah, and it's it's really not much no. to spoil here. So the, Almost this entire movie was in the trailer. <laughs> the basic premise of the story here is Mario and Luigi are plumbers in Brooklyn and mm -hmm. Queens, and they try to go help with a, a massive flood in the street. They find Mario this... Mario wants to be a hero. Yeah, they find this green tube, um, and they're, they are playing with that, how Mario's a hero and Luigi's a scaredy cat. Um, they get sucked into the green tube. Mario gets dropped in the Mushroom Kingdom. Luigi gets dropped into... Uh, the Badlands, like Bowser's Badlands, whatever yeah. they call it. And so basically Mario wants to go rescue Luigi. He ends up meeting Toad, who introduces him to uh, Princess Peach, who wants to go ask for the help of the Kongs to defeat Bowser. So they have a mutual interest here. And that sets us on a, on, a, on the path. That's all we really need. Um, I thought they did a good job. Like the Tanuki suit jokes. One person calls him a raccoon. One person calls him a bear. That's conversations we've been having for yeah. 30 years. You know, that was that was a nice thing. I actually, maybe my favorite moment of the whole movie was at the very end, um, after they have basically won the defeat Bowser, they play uh, Mr. Blue Sky, an homage to Chris Pratt and Guardians and, and that whole thing, because Pratt 
is a hero in this movie. He's also was a hero in the Lego movie. He's really he's playing this character very often, but I, I enjoyed he's that. He's a hero a in Jurassic Park. He's a yeah. hero in <laughs> many of things. Um, Moneyball. Could we get a mid credit and a post credit here? The mid credit scene is Donkey Kong still miniature playing piano. Bowser still miniature. Oh, sorry. Uh, Bowser, correct. Um, also, there's a whole uh, little weird love story in here where Bowser loves Princess Peach and wants to marry her. That was neither here nor no, but that, there. So that does play more into like the video game of Bowser always trying to kidnap Princess Peach. And what I right. liked about this is that it was not Mario trying to save Peach. It was trying to save his brother. Yep, I did like that. They did not make Peach a damsel in distress, which was nice. She was a, a bad <laughs> fighter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and there were some nice Omat. Oh so we didn't outright get Super Smash Brothers stuff in here, but especially some some of Peach's movements and the way she floated with her skirt was yep. Super Smash Brothers like. Oh, also, there was a great callback to uh, Mario 2. When she finished the course and she was going to grab the flag, she floated for a second. Yes. Just yeah, like in yeah. Mario 2. Yeah, I loved yeah. it. Good stuff. Also, some good Jumpman stuff, some good uh, Donkey Kong arcade stuff, some good uh, Mike Tyson punch out references, all in there. Yeah. And then they also had at one point before Mario gets to Peach, we see a herd of Yoshis running behind yep. him across the river, all sorts of colors. And then, of course, the post credit here. And if you're wondering, and I think smartly, I actually really like this too. Yoshi's not introduced until Mario 2. So, they do not include him in this first movie, which I thought was nice. It sort of makes sense. The post credit is a little Yoshi egg back in the real world, not in the Mushroom Kingdom, getting ready to hatch. So two things here. Credit to us for not bringing up Chris Pratt's voice at all yet, because I thought he was fine. Yeah, it was. He did like a New York accent, yeah, which had a little bit of a hint of an Italian thing in there, which worked. And then also, I think what would have helped this movie is in the final scene. Now, obviously, Luigi does help Mario defeat Bowser, but I think it would have been better if he was the one that grabbed the star and beat Bowser himself, and he saved Mario after Mario had kind of saved him. Yeah, and if you're thinking to, like, video game accuracy, two people can't use the same star. Come on. Come I know. On so, that. uh, fix that, <laughs> Nintendo. I did want um an homage to, like, Luigi's up B move in, in Smash because it's so fucking powerful, or some sort of reference to Luigi's mansion or something like that. Now this is a universe that can continue to expand. Obviously as they're they going to make a million them. movies, right? As they have with all the minion movies, but I would have liked a little more, a little more world building that like we got some, but I would would have liked a little more. Yeah. I would say off of this, we're going to get a donkey Kong movie. Yeah. And I wouldn't be surprised. Could they get a toad movie out of this or would it just be like toad shorts? Yeah, yeah, that's not a bad idea. Toad shorts, actually. Yeah, that's a Toad good idea. shorts. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So yep. once again, I'm way too high. 34 is way too high. Probably 32 or 33. I, mean, I think that's the range, part. though. I think we got the range right. 30 to 34. But once I again, this is a range. as a father who's excited to bring his son. Yep. And this is me as a non-father who might show my niece and nephew. Oh hi, it's Goo from the Mac and Goo Movie Club. If you like what you just saw, you can find full episodes of our program on Apple Podcasts, TuneIn, Stitcher, CastBox, iHeartRadio, or wherever podcasts are found. And now it's time for girls jumping on trampolines.